Hey friends, it's Stacy with Stacy Makes, and I am the owner of a small crochet business called Apple Tree Boutique, where I normally bring you um, market videos, market prep, what I've made, pattern reviews, pattern designs, things like that. And this week I have a market vlog and a market breakdown. Um, before I do that though, I'm going to talk about just a few things that I did make this week. If you watched last week's video, you saw that I was trying to do 250 uh, last week and this week to um, build inventory for this market, uh, which is a super realistic goal for me, but sometimes just life gets in the way. And last week I did not hit my goal and this week I did not either. Um, I did start to slow down as the week went on. Um, things just came up. My hands were tired. I had more inventory than you just need for a market like this one outside I was the weather was making me anxious and so anyway I did work on a special project which you'll see a bonus video this week for um, that I can't show in this video yet but do watch out for that and um, so I did make that this week but I'm going to talk about it in the next video so um, let's just go over the few things that I did make. I did make one new pa two new patterns, really, I guess, for me. Um, first is this Duffy, Duffy the Dino. Itty, I think it's Bitsy Buddy Duffy the Dino pattern by Sia and Penn. Um, this is a no-sew pattern. You do make these tiny little legs and arms and attach them in the round. And then you do um, crochet, surface crochet these spikes on, which I really like the method she used for those spikes which I probably will carry over into the chubby dinos I make as well. Um, his little face shape is so cute. He's just got like a little, um, kind of like a little nose that just kind of pops out there and um, these little arms and he sits flat and he's just squishy. I mean, he just fits in your hand. I think it would be, he's an ideal size for a little toddler um, or anybody really for that matter. So I really enjoyed this pattern. He probably, I was talking and relaxing um, and just chilling the Friday night before um, the market. If you saw my live I did with my daughter Tara, she does the markets with me from Old Soul Factory Crochet. Um, she was here Friday night to stay the night before our market and we, we did a live while she price tag stuff and I started this and I didn't finish it on the live, I just made the arms and legs and then I finished it um, later. So um, anyway. He's cute. I think I'm going to, I think he probably, if I was making him without interruptions and talking and chatting, um, I could probably make him in, I would guess 40 to 40 minutes ish is where I'd land. Um, anyway, I'm going to charge 15 for him. He's cute. I made him this week. So that's the first thing. And then, um, that's the other new pattern for me this week was a t pattern test for zero gravity crochet. And that was, um, this itty bitty, Sleepy Dino pattern. It's a no-sew pattern. Let me get his ears turned around for you. I made it in Premier Basic Chenille and I made it in Sweet Snuggles, like the mint chocolate chip version I did here. <laughs> I did the Highland version for both, so it has the hair, but it also has, you know, this is optional, obviously. Um, but it is a really unique pattern. I really enjoyed it. And for being a cow, um, it and being no so it worked up really quickly um i think i'm going to charge 18 for these the pattern itself uh was very clear the um, the these ears you make ahead and so into the round as you go around um, i would suggest going back possibly and sewing them and securing them forward because they kind of want to turn just a little bit but outside of that um the pattern was extremely easy. You work it from the nose to the end. Uh, you just color change for this part and color change for the bobbles um, and the horns. So, and then I, you just tie on some strings if you want onto the tail. So he's a cute little size. Um, I really enjoyed making this. Pattern clear too was great. The outcome is cute. Just a little, just laying down a little dot, uh, cow and um, I think it's a marketable pattern for sure. I mean, it, it probably took me um, 45 minutes <clears throat> maybe to make this guy. Um, and so that's a good pattern. So I would suggest getting this one and I made two of those this week and I'm gonna charge 18 for these. Okay, that's all the new patterns that I made for this week. I bought a lot, but that's the only ones that I made. I did 
make as I noted this last week in my life is something I needed to make more of was my chubby dinos because I only had one left so I made two more and uh, so that makes I have three in stock and this pattern is free on Instagram Nicolas Crochet and Celestial CB Crochet and then I made two Fred the sea turtles um, I made all I made the heads and all of the flippers at my parents house last Sunday we get together on Sundays and eat lunch and so while everyone was sitting and chatting, I made all of those pieces, which made this these super quick. It felt like to work up because then I got home and all I had to do was the shells and sew all the pieces into the round. And so anyway, Fred the Sea Turtle, if you've seen my pattern before, I make the pattern like it says, except for I don't turn on the last round of the shell and I tack the head back on these. And I sell these for 25. Those are both burnt blanket. And um, I made a brontosaurus. So this is not a new pattern to me. I have made this pattern before uh, last fall, probably, you know, so you, you haven't seen it in my videos, but I have made it before. This is not with a K, K-N-O-T, not two, T-O-O, -O, shabby crochet on um, Etsy. And uh, it is a no-sew pattern. It is, takes a lot of, if you're looking to use up variegated yarns, I, I, sometimes I don't like to use variegated yarns depending on how they work up on really small things because they change color so quickly and it just kind of looks messy or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, but anyway, being on a bigger animal like this, variegated I really like and because you can still then see the, sh the body shape. Um, sometimes I feel like the body shape gets lost in the variegated yarns on smaller stuff, which I don't know if anybody else agrees with me or not. Feel free to leave a comment. Let me know I'm not alone in this. But anyway, this is a no-sew pattern. It is unique. You make the hump part, this just the top part of this hump, and you set it aside. And then you start head down, attach the hump, work your way down. You do leave holes for the legs and the tail, and then you join back in and work the legs from the body out, each particular one. The only real um, finicky part about this pattern is making sure <clears throat> to line up your hole spaces with your um, on the body. Um, this is the second time making this pattern and as you'll see I did not do a great job this time. I even went back a stitch or two and I ripped out all my holes and then went back and, and moved them but my head is a little off center. Um, outside of that though I feel like my tail is centered and it, it doesn't look bad from here but you can just tell he's just like a stitch or two off so but anyway I sold I made this last time sold it at the last show and I made it with variegated burnout last time as well. And he's $35. He's pretty big. So that's the last thing I made this week. Um, I was able to show them to you because none of that sold at the market. Um, and that was $156 worth of inventory that I made this week. Two smalls, three mediums, and three large items. I only made eight things outside of my special project, which you'll see the video for this week. Um, as far as the market goes, let me insert some footage. This was a horrible market. Let's just say it. It was the worst one I've probably ever attended um, for many reasons. Um, but I will let you watch the footage of the day and I will summarize it at the end. So I'll insert this time lapse and some of my vlog footage um, here and we'll talk about it at the end.
So we just got done getting set up. It's warm and I'm kind of sweaty. <laughs> But um, we're here, it is windy. We decided to put two sidewalls on. Um, and I think that's really nice because it's keeping the wind from blowing stuff over for sure. So every time the wind blows though, I'm still super nervous. Maybe I'll get over that today. But I'm gonna try to eat my breakfast now and cool down and relax for the next 15, 20 minutes while the show's getting ready to start, so. Okay, little update, the wind is crazy and it's blown over the keychain rack so we had to take it down and put everything in the baskets and um, we have ripped the side walls uh, the velcro off the sidewall corners so we're using zip ties to hold it up over there so it's been exciting and it's not even 10 o'clock so yeah it's 9 36 so not even an hour in and we're already like regretting being here on this very windy day so if we take the sidewalls completely down the wind will just barrel through here and blow over I think our shelves and all of our plushies all day and we'll be picking them up so we'll see where this goes talk to you later okay video update we are not having fun <laughs> is it sprinkling Oh my gosh. Okay. So the wind is killing us. It's just absolutely killing us. It's terrible. It's not very busy. Um, we're two hours in and of a five hour market and I'm not sure how much longer we'll try to stay because it's pretty bad. Tents are blowing, stuff, people's stuff's falling over. So that's my update. Okay, friends, um, I'm checking in from the car, which means that, yes, we uh, left the market, and it, yes, it, we left very early. We left at noon. Um, we only got three hours in. The wind started really picking up. Then it started to sprinkle, and then it was windy and it was sprinkling, and there just was not much foot traffic either. There was hardly anybody walking through at this point. And we were really waiting for lunchtime, thinking people would come for the food trucks and then walk around. And another a fellow vendor that uh, did this market for the last several years was like, this is a much smaller crowd. I don't know where these people are that are normally here, but she's like, this was just not what it normally is. And she's the one that recommended it and she felt so bad, but I'm like, it's just the way markets go. You know, that sometimes it's just what you get. So we learned a lot today. Our car is very full came home with almost all of our inventory. I'll give you a complete breakdown. Sorry, my hand is in the way. I'll give you a complete breakdown of what I did sell, but it was very minimal. I made my booth feedback and maybe a little bit more. Um, and that was about it. Today was more about lessons learned and what to do next time or what to buy to, you know, to move forward. We had plenty of weights. We had, um, that was not the problem. The top of our tent did really well. Our tent never did feel like it was pulling out of the ground ever, but it just felt like it was, I mean, the sidewalls were necessary, but they just were gathering wind and it, and people were just packing up and stuff was blowing over and it just was not good. So um, anyway, so that's my thoughts. I'm sweaty, I'm hot. Um, we, we got to Arby's, we're getting ready to go in and eat. Thank goodness, I mean, it was lunchtime anyway, so we're like, Let's go get some food, sit down, and decompress for a little while. <laughs> yeah, we need it. Before we go back to the house and we unpack everything and then probably sit around and watch YouTube and crochet for the rest of the evening to just, you know, take a nap. Yeah, take a nap. We had to get up. I was up my 5.15 this morning, which is earlier than anyone should have to wake up on the fun day. So It feels like it was a 12-hour long market. I know, and I'm like so exhausted hot. from like holding the tent down and holding the stuff and then being stressed. My body is just physically tired. So um, anyway, so that's, I just wanted to give some thoughts so that I had them on video before we um, went in and then I did my market breakdown tomorrow for you guys. So we'll talk to you later. Okay, um, so as you saw in the time-lapse setup, we, it, this was our first time in an outdoor market uh, where we had to worry about the wind. This was our second outdoor market period. Um, the first one that really didn't have a good wind break um, and had a lot of wind. It was in the it was in the weather forecast. The wind was all week. There was some rain as well uh, in the forecast that was pretty serious and then that got dropped 
and then some just light chances here and there. So we decided to go ahead and give it a try. Um, but you'll see, you, as you saw, it was warm. Um, it was very breezy. I think the gusts were anywhere from 30 to 40 miles an hour. It was blowing people's tents back. It was blowing people's things over that didn't have their stuff secured. We only had a few issues with that. It, the wind, like out of nowhere, just gusts in one time and blew my sidewall with the window into the keychain rack and knocked it on the ground. So we put those all in my plastic uh, clear bins that I had brought inventory in and just put it on the table with the sign. And then um, one time, every, and then the wind every once in a while, we put the sidewalls on the two, on the south and the west side of the booth the, where the wind was coming from to block it from blowing through and blowing stuff off the shelves all day. And every once in a while, the wind would whip around and it would whip the other direction. And then it blew stuff off the very top shelves of our wooden bookshelves, if you saw those. So uh, stuff from the very top of those shelves flew on the, on the ground once. And those were bungeed together and they were bungeed at the top in three places to the tent itself and we were so we learned a lot so some of the stuff we learned one um, we are good on weights are we had rebar stakes that we put through the holes and hammered down into the ground with a mallet then we put on um, two 10 pound weights so 20 pounds and the black weights and then we had these long weights that we velcroed around the poles that were 15 a piece so we had 35 pounds on every corner um, which was significantly, I mean, was more than enough for the wind that we had in, incurred for the day. So we were the only ones, I think, that probably had that much weight and whose tent didn't, you know, try to lift up all day or they weren't holding on to it out of complete fear that their tent was going to fly away. So we had enough weights. We're good there. Um, I even left my sand weights at home because I do have additional weights even. Um, so that was, that was good. The sidewalls, um, were cheap. <clears throat> they came with my tent. My tent top did fine. Uh, the sidewalls, the gusts of wind that came through that corner ripped the corner itself. Um, we had, and I luckily had bungee, extra bungees and zip ties with me. Um, just something I threw in the car out of anxiousness and brought down to the market and thought, you know, you just never know. And I ended up using the zip ties and all the bungee cords to just secure things more. Um, so maybe not a bad idea if you do outdoor markets. Um, so we had to make some holes in the sidewalls, which I thought, you know, pretty much ruined anyway, because the Velcro's ripped off of them. So we made a couple holes and zip tied that to the corners to keep them from just flapping. The wind was blowing those sidewalls in and out all day long. It had to have annoyed the people that were sitting behind us, I'm sure. And I felt bad because most of the time it was blown in on us, but every once in a while when the wind would whip around the other direction, it was blowing back on them. So that wasn't really great. So, um... I need a sidewall solution because we needed to keep the wind from just flat out blowing through because the plushies are just so lightweight. Um, so if anybody has suggestions on that, um, it was stressful. We had to leave early. It was just a really long day and it was a, it was just a bad market on, on my regard. Um, not only were we battling the weather, this market was a friend had suggested it and obviously she was there and her husband, bless his heart, went and got my car for me that was parked a block away and brought it around during all of this while we were holding stuff down and um, was we were able to leave early and pack up easily that way without feeling like we had both you know left somebody to hold everything down and bless his heart thank you Mark for doing that for us um, but not only did we battle the weather we the schedule date there was surrounding cities that had great big things going on markets as well and their thoughts were that maybe when people got out to go to the other markets, they were going to stop at all of them. But as a shopper, even myself, I kind of wondered if that would be true um, because there was a great big indoor one at a school I tried to get into um, that they said they were full of crochet people already. Um, I would have much preferred that and I probably would have been 10 times busier and I would have been inside. Um, and, and then there was a collector's carnival, like flea market vintage kind of thing that was going on in just the town right next door. And so I, from my vendor friend's um, experience, there was a half or less people there than there usually is. So not only was we battling the weather, we were battling a bad schedule date and a small crowd. So I should have, honestly, um, I should have followed my instincts and, um, this Saturday, yesterday, was also our town's citywide yard sales. And I was going to set up inside of our venue, which is right next door to um, the antique mall uptown. 
and I pulled out of that to do this market and it would have been inside. It would have been right next door to all the people going in and out of the antique mall. And I guarantee that if we had done that, I would have made at least twice as much money, not been out the drive, not have gotten up so early, not have had to battle the weather. And I probably would have been 10 times happier, but lessons learned. It was what it was. So any tips that anybody wants to leave down in the comments regarding weather, wind especially, um, I think had it just been rain, straight down rain anyway, and not horrible storms, we could have put on the other sidewall and not have gotten you know rain either but it did start to sprinkle and rain just lightly as well we're like we saw on the radar that there was more rain coming and we left at noon so we were there for three hours and here is what you guys are all really waiting for which is my market breakdown of how much i did sell and what sold which is not much this will not take very long um i sold one jellyfish uh, for 18 dollars I sold Layla the frog that popped up and down. I only ended up making one and I sold it for 12. I sold the lamb from Madeline Mako. I told you guys those lambs and elephants. I try to take some to every show and I sell them. I sold the lamb. I sold a uh, ma like a dusty rosy pink bear blanket body snuggler from Mama Made Minis that I'd had for quite a while for 32. I sold one baby fish from Stitch Sister Co. for $10 and I sold two things out of the $5 bin and they were in my last video that I did the one pattern six different yarns for the baby fish or sorry baby turtles. <laughs> it was the very smallest one and the one up from that it was the baby bear yarn and the posh yarn turtles and those were the smallest ones I had and they were I put them I threw them in the $5 bin because they were much smaller than the ones I make that are eight and sweet snuggles normally. But, so that is what I sold for the day, which was 102 whopping dollars, guys, 102 bucks. Um, and I paid a $35 booth fee. So I, if you do the math, I was $67. Um, we stopped at Arby's. So my lunch, I paid for Tara's lunch and it was like $23 for lunch. And then we stopped at this little cute store on the way home um, that's like sells home decor and stuff. And we thought we'll just stop in there. And much to our surprise outside of the store was a trucker hat bar, which I didn't even know existed. I guess it's a thing um, in, around Nashville area especially. But anyway, the sweetest lady, um, I'll put her Instagram down here. But you'll have to catch Tara's video. She's gonna have um, her market vlog, I think on Tuesday will include some footage of the trucker hat that she built at this um, trucker bar, which was just, it was just super cute idea. Um, really, really thought that was cool. So you guys can, um, excuse me, check her out if you want um, and check out Tara's vlog on Tuesday where, I mean, she's gonna have the same experience, but break down what she made, uh, which was not much either. And um, anyway, that was the market, um, not a success and they all, aren't always a success. This is our first full year. We started in the summer of last year. So this is our first full year doing crochet markets and the market is <clears throat> pretty saturated around here. So if you don't get your application in pretty early for a place and they're actually jurying everything, which is, I like juried shows, um, you don't get in because there's just too many, there's, you know, you, you get denied because they're only going to take three to four, sometimes less, sometimes just a little bit more, but I prefer three to four max max I mean I prefer two to three probably but um crochet people so they just have a variety of stuff there um but anyway so lessons lots of lessons learned if you watched this long bless your heart and leave a comment if you've done outdoor markets before and have tips suggestions tricks anything like that dealing with adverse weather anyway thank you guys for being here um if you enjoyed this video like subscribe I appreciate that you know, leave a comment, um, ask questions as always. I try to interact with everybody and um, get back to you as soon as possible. And catch me again this week uh, for at least one bonus video um, that'll be coming out that was super fun to do. And then who knows, maybe I'll do a live again this week um, and sit and chat again this week sometime. At this point, I have a few things going on, so I'm not sure when I will schedule it if I do one at all but maybe we'll see you there. So I appreciate you being here. You guys continue to crochet. Happy crocheting and have a great week. We'll talk to you later. See ya.